Good morning. Uh, well, I'm Marcio. This is a uh, joint work with Jasper de Bock and Arthur van Kemp from uh, NT University uh, in Belgium. So, our goal is trying to justify the use of tier slave priors uh, based on philosophical principles. So, some of them are very well known, uh, like exigibility and, and coherence, but we'll also talk about uh, what we call the open mindedness. Uh, requirement and learning from experience for predictive inference rules. And we will combine them with uh, an additional requirement that we call partition variance principle. And this is closely related to uh, W. E. Jensen's uh, sufficientness positive that we'll also talk about. So, Bayes, first try to answer this, this question, one of the questions he, he tried to answer. Given that we have observed k uh, successes in the first n trials of some experiment, what's the probability that the next trial will be a success or a failure? And this can be generalized to multivariate case. To answer this, let's define what we call predictive inference rule. So, is uh, given any finite initial uh, sequence of realized experiments, a predictive inference rule is just a numerical prediction in zero and interval about any proposition on a finite number of future experiments. So we can say, oh, this is a, a conditional probability, if you wish. The basic paradigm is just, well, you have a prior to, to solve this question, to, to answer this question. Uh, you have a prior, and you consider a potentially infinite sequence of binary random values, and then you integrate um, your likelihood, and you have your prediction or, of your probability. So, if you have a prior, you find your prediction. From priors, you get predictions. <coughs> but let's, in order not to have problems with those conditional probabilities, let's require or let's uh, call this open mindedness condition. So, we'll consider, loosely speaking, any finite sequence of realized experiments uh, possible. So, this these probabilities are greater than zero. So we are open-minded about any finite sequence of experiments. But we can also uh, try to act the other way around. We think about our predictions and then we characterize, for instance, a prior or a given set of priors. That was the vision of Definetti, for instance. So for him, Parameters have no operational meaning. So to properly justify the use of some prior or a specific prior, uh, we should derive it. You should derive a prior by imposing uh, properties on the predictive inference rule that we were using. And some argued that Bayes tried to do this. Uh, this is a very nice uh, paper by um, Stephen Stiglitz. So another requirement that is very well known is, is coherence. So if a set of probability uh, assessments is coherent, we know that they satisfy the usual axioms of probability calculus, including uh, finite but not countable activity. And the Dutch book argument is very well known also to justify this, this requirement. But definitely also introduced uh, exchangeability, that is very well known uh, nowadays. So if we have two subsequences um, of binary running quantities, for instance, and both have the, the same number of, of successes or, or failures, but one is just the permutation of the other. If we consider them exchangeable, we should attach to both subsequences the same probability. So a key result after the kinetic was, oh, sorry, the key result is if we have an infinite sequence of binary random quantities considered to be exchangeable, we know that there is a random quantity that we call theta, at a series value in the zero one interval with unique distribution function such that this probability is just a convex mixture of the binomial likelihood. And again, this is what we call the prior, and this is definite as implementation of theorem that can be easily generalized to the multinomial case or real random variables or real random quantities. And now then we have our predictions or our probabilities and we can characterize a prior, for instance. Just rephrasing the Finetti's representation theorem, uh, we, we say that if we have a 
coherent, open-minded, uh, exchangeable predictive inference rule. This is, corresponds uniquely to a distribution function on the parameter space that we call private through the finality or through the multinomial likelihood and basis theorem. So using this theorem, he, for instance, uh, showed that the uniform distribution on the counts uh, is implied only by the uniform distribution on the parameter space. Uh, the polya earn scheme was is easy, easily derived. Uh, you can show that it's easily derived by the Dirichlet prior, but only by the Dirichlet prior. So another requirement uh, we can impose on, on predictive inference rules was proposed by this uh, philosopher, uh, W.E. Johnson, in 1932, that we call uh, sufficientness postulate. So what is this? We say that our predictive inference rule, or the probability that the, probability that the next uh, experiment is of category J, so this category set has uh, two or more categories, or three or more categories, given the past experiments, is a function just on the number of times category J was observed and the total number of observations. So this is what uh, was called sufficient as possible. And you can show that this is equivalent to require that this probability, that this probability, this conditional probability, our predictive inference rule, is linear in the number of times category J was observed. Given this, you can show that if your predictive rule is open-minded and you consider uh, exchangeability, definite representation theorem will imply that the likelihood first is multinomial, and then, thanks to this linearity assumption, uh, the prior should be a Dirichlet, or if the random quantities are considered independent at the generate distribution. So talking about now independence. Independent case is not very appealing because usually you assume that uh, the past provide, provides useful information about the future. So we'll call this uh, principle learning from experience. And uh, it's useful to assume that your predictive inference rule uh, learns from experience. So uh, from a practical point of view, it's a useful property and, and that's why we are uh, imposing uh, it on, on our predictive inference rules. Then you have this result, proven by Johnson for a specific case and Zabel generalized proof afterwards. So if you have uh, an open-minded uh, and coherent exchangeable predictive inference rule with number of categories, so the cardinality of X is written into, you have three or more categories, and you satisfy Johnson's sufficient as possibly, and your uh, predictive inference rule learn with experience, your prior should be a digital aid. Well, thanks to the Finanix representation theorem, to save the base problem, that problem I, I showed you, you have just to pick a prior. But first, you have to partition what we call the possibility space. So the possibility space is not a simple space. Uh, the possibility space is a set that contains all possible outcomes the experiment, the, of the experiment one can envision. So what's that? You're going to toss a coin and say, okay, the possible uh, results are heads and tails. But why? It can be the, the edge, it can be uh, the coin never lands, can be uh, you faint and you never observe the, the result or whatever. So, uh, when you partition this possibility space, you have a simple space. And then you choose the labels according to which the outcomes will be classified. And this can, can have a major influence on your inferences. So, let's give an example. I have a disease affecting men and women, and a treatment that may cure or not cure this disease. And an obvious sample space is, is this and the probabilities of the elements of this uh, set X is, as usual, taken um, in the simplex, in the standard three-dimensional simplex. And I have two positions with these uh, priors, uh, with the Dirichlet prior, given by, uh, specified by 
these uh, vectors. Then I have a uh, study testing the effect of some treatment on, on, this, on this disease and I have uh, eight people affected by the disease being three men and one woman cured and three men and one woman not cured. cured. And we have this data set, this, this vector and we'll compute the probability that the next patient will be, for instance, a cured male or cured female and so on using the three, these three, three priors and a mixture. So, those two priors and a mixture assign equal weight to both. So, those are the results. And, of course, you can add these numbers, for instance, and you'll have this. So, cured male, cured males, plus cured females, you have the probability that the next uh, patient will be cured according to, the, to this prior. And you can add those numbers, have this, and you add those numbers at this, and so on, even for the mixture. So you can believe me that if you add those numbers, you have this, and so on. However, let's consider a new situation where the object of interest now is the probability that the next patient is cured or not, regardless of the sex. So you have a new sample space, so I just pull the yolk categories, and I have a new data set, and just pull the yolk data set, and new priors. So, again, I just pull the, the old priors, but now the, the third uh, physician uh, was not sure about which prior, and then a mixture again with equal weight to both priors. And if you take a look at these numbers, they are exactly the same here, right? However, these numbers, they are not half of half of them. So, if you add, uh, if you add those, you don't have a half. So something is going wrong here about with the, the mixture. So let's try to find out find out what, what's going on. For this we'll define what we call the inference system, that's just a map from every possible partition of omega. Omega is now our sample space and x is our omega is our possibility space, sorry, and x is our sample space. So for every uh, sample space uh, we provide, or the inference system provides you a corresponding predictive inference rule. And from now on, we will consider only coherent, open-minded, and exchangeable inference system. Those are taken for granted. And thanks to the Finetics representation theorem, uh, you, you choose an inference system. This is related to uh, a map from finite partitions to priors. And therefore, for every sample space, you, the inference system will provide you a corresponding prior. So, another requirement uh, you, you uh, call to the stage is consistency. So if you have two sample spaces, like in our example, X and Y, and you have prior beliefs for X and for Y, uh, those must be uh, related through ma marginalization. So when you marginalize the priors, the dish layer for instance, uh, this is straightforward. So if by prior beliefs uh, for X, they are related through my, to my prior beliefs to I through marginalization, I say that they are consistent. But I can also require consistency to my posterior beliefs. If I do this, I will say that they respect, these this beliefs respect what I call partition invariance principle. So, we define such, such principle like this. Uh, an inference system I call partition invariant if for any finite partition X of the possibility space, that is for every um, sample space, any finite refinement or coursing Y of X, so I can uh, not just pull my categories, but I can also refine my sample space. Um, and I have data detailed enough to uh, be labeled according to X and Y, so I can have heads and tails, or cured and not cured, but if I don't have the sex, I cannot um, label my, my data in, in, in sample space X, for instance. So my data should be detailed enough. The resulting posterior beliefs about any proposition um, as given by the predictive 
the predicted influence rule for x and for i, for y, are related to marginalization. So predictive influences made by a partition invariant system do not depend on the sample space, or should not depend on the sample space. And therefore, they should avoid the, the kind of problem I showed you in the example. Then, uh, I can show this proposition, that's very easy, the, the proofs on paper, that partition invariance principle is equivalent to Johnson's sufficient as possible. And that's very intuitive, but the proof is, is also uh, very simple. And combining this with another proposition, we can uh, have our, finally, our main result that says that if I have an infant system where the cardinality of my um, possibility space, not sample space, is greater than 2, and my predictive inference rule allow me to learn from experience, satisfies partition invariance uh, principle, and as I told you, is coherent, open minded, and exchangeable. For any sample space, my uh, corresponding prior will be. Sorry, a dish layer. Should be a dish layer. So, uh, we try to show that if my predictive inference rule satisfies those requirements, so, singability, learning from experience, open minded, and uh, partition invariance and coherence that is not here, the corresponding prior should be a dish layer. Of course, if you have a situation where the the categories are ordered, for instance, if you're considering uh, political parties, for instance, and, and you order them from uh, the left wing, wing to the right wing, or uh, directions, north, south, west. In that case, you can use uh, mixtures of these states, for instance. But if you're considering those principles, you should not use mixtures of these states. For us, therefore, this is a more principled approach to the problem of assigning prior instead of using uh, mathematical convenient uh, criteria like a Johnson sufficientness possibly is someone uh, sometimes uh, criticized on, on that on, on these grounds. It's just a mathematical uh, criteria. Uh, criteria. <coughs> so is this this principle is desirable in several applications like genetics and economics, social, social sciences. But uh, we remark that it's our business to, to assess if those principles are, are reasonable or desirable. So we should tell our clients if those principles are, are applied to the, pro to the problem at hand. So these are the, the main references and well, that's it. Thank you very much.